Welcome to the Daily Items Winter Sports Podcast, a weekly look at what's happening with the Susquehanna Valley's high school and college teams. From Bucknell and Susquehanna University men's and women's basketball to all the high school hoops, wrestling, swimming, and more, the Daily Item Sports team has the latest on the players, coaches, and teams to watch. Now, here's your host, Daily Item Sports Editor, Kurt Ritzman. Hello and welcome to our final winter sports podcast and our final weekly sports podcast of the school year. I'm Daily Item Sports Editor Kurt Ritzman and I'm joined today by Scott Dodinsky. You're getting a lot of Scott today, so I hope you're all excited. I know I am. We're going to start with girls basketball. Let's start with the... I'm going to call it the bad news first. <laughs> uh, Mifflinburg lost a tough state semifinal game la- or last night, so Tuesday night. Uh, you were out there at St. Francis University. What did you see from from the Wildcats? Well, it's interesting that, that you say the bad news because I don't know, uh, although it was disappointing, don't don't get me wrong, I don't know how many of, of either the girls, the, the, the coaching staff, or the fans took it that way. Um, I think they were remarkably mature and, um, you know, kind of introspective on, on realizing what they'd accomplished. Mm-hmm. Um it, you know, as as we noted, it was a team with only one uh, state playoff win uh, previously in its history. That a couple years ago, and uh, to put the to put the the, the wins together that uh, Mifflinburg did in a row to, to to even be in a situation, a state final situation, and playing for the opportunity to go to Hershey was was remarkable in itself. Um, after winning its its first round game, Mifflinburg had to uh, avenge last year's loss to Kenner Dale. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was matched up against the the number one team in the state, uh, unbeaten and defending champion Lancaster Catholic with a 62 game win streak. And darned if the the <laughs> Wildcats didn't find a way to beat them in overtime and and you know earn a shot against North Catholic, an established program that was. The 1A state champion back in 2016, beating Lords Regional, and and uh, took it upon itself to to upgrade uh, its competition, move up in class to to, to quad A, and uh, just played a really a, a really good game. Uh, I think I'll remember the third quarter for a long time. Uh, it was a 24-23 Mifflinburg advantage at halftime. Okay. And the teams played that third quarter to a 41-41 tie. It was wow. it was really uh, to, to my to my eye what what a what a state semifinal was all about. Just uh, give and take, hard nosed, big shot making, and um, you know the, the Wildcats. Yes, were disappointed. Do, do they mm-hmm. do they score five points early in the fourth quarter, go up 46-41, and then not score again for <laughs> seven minutes? Of course, that's disappointing, but. Everything in perspective, uh, that that program uh, from just being a, 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 another team in the area that we cover to uh, to an elite program in in a short period of time, uh, remarkable work by Coach Kelly Griffith and her staff. Um, the end of an era. Uh, the Griffith twins, Kelly's daughters, uh, Riley and Reagan, played their last game. Uh, they did remarkable things to elevate the the program and build on you know the classes that came before them. Notably, uh, Kayla Klein and Julie McCardle Co. All state players uh, that that were in on the ground floor of this uh, of this uh, you know explosion of success. But yes, disappointing. But at the same time, I think to a man the 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 the, the handful of girls I talked to just just grateful, satisfied. Um, a lot of gratification in, in, in accomplishing what they did. And that's what really stuck out to me about your story that was in Wednesday's paper is it seemed, you know, sure, uh, sad about the loss, but everyone seemed to end it with, we're so proud of what we accomplished. And I, just, I thought that was really mature coming, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes after after that loss. Absolutely, and, and uh, I'd be I'd be lying if I said there weren't tears. Mm-hmm. Uh, that this this is a painful thing when you have you know aspirations of playing on the state's biggest stage and and possibly winning a gold medal. Who wouldn't be you know upset by it? But they were you know to a large extent for the last week anyway underdogs, and uh, they as the only thing I could think of was stared down two state powers and really gave them all they wanted, made those teams work to survive and move on. Talking about playing on the state's biggest stage, that's what the Lord's Regional Girls are going to be doing for the second time in four years. Overcame a 
bad first half uh, against Jenkintown on Tuesday night with a really good defense and, and nice second half mm -hmm. to get the win there. Um, you were out at their practice earlier today. Yep. I guess what's what's kind of their mood heading into the state final on Friday at noon if you want to go. I think uh, you know although although it was more business like mm -hmm. uh, a little bit maybe subdued. Um, I think there there is a, a, a genuine excitement for being back there. You have to understand, Kurt, the the Lord's Girls uh, of three years ago um, wound up having two state or excuse me two all state players in that mix, and each of those girls in successive years graduated. So although they bring back you know three players with experience in that in that state final from 2016, a loss to North Catholic. Um, this might be the, the 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 worst odds they had to return to, to Hershey. Um, not having that singular star player really goes to show the the, the you know how w w those girls felt the responsibility of, of bringing that program back to, to this level, this kind of prominence. Um, they have um, the three seniors I mentioned: Francis Chaponis, Liliana Bickle, and Sierra Coleman. Mm -hmm. um, also with starters Emma Shimko and Katie Sandry. Uh, th that's the core group, and that is the the group that, you know, last night in, in Reading defeated a Jenkintown team, which had eliminated them in each of the last two state uh, tournaments. Um, so th they, you know, there was some baggage involved there um, going into that with that that mental uh, that that mental uh, block hanging over them. How do we get over past Jenkintown? And then, like you said, to open the first half uh, down 16-7, to seven, uh, <laughs> if that's not circling the drain, I, I don't know what is. Um, great defensive effort, made some three-pointers, you know, regained that confidence. But although, although I think there's a difference between confidence and belief. Mm -hmm. I think they believed they could win. I think they needed the confidence by making a couple shots. Once those two things meshed in the second half, they were the team that, that we've seen here in the postseason. And uh, I think they go into to Friday's game um, – uh, against Berlin Brothers Valley, the 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 uh, District Five champion, with with a with a good deal of confidence and with the benefit of having been there before and everything sure. that does. So I know, don't know a ton about Berlin Brothers Valley. You and me both. <laughs> but I feel like you know, just based on on who they beat, on the the fact that they've been there before, that mm -hmm. you know, to me, Lords feels like a, at least a slight favorite heading into Friday at noon. Yeah, uh, I, I've I've crammed a bit on Berlin Brothers Valley just just here recently since since coming back from Lord's practice, and uh, I've learned that they're three three time district champions. They beat Shanksville um, for each of those titles, and this okay. one this year was a, a little different for them because Shanksville was actually the top seed, and Berlin Brothers Valley went as the number two seed, having lost twice to Shanksville oh. during the season. So they win. They they win that game, the district championship. Come back several games later to meet in the state semifinals <laughs> against you know your your district runner up, and win another game. Um, uh, from what I from what I have read, Berlin Brothers Valley in, in the past two years after those district championships w mm -hmm. were eliminated in the in the state state second round both time. Okay. So this is this is deep water for them as well. Uh, their leading scorer, a kind of a double-double girl, is a 6'1 junior named uh, Kiara Booth. Um, she is one of two juniors and three seniors who start. Another senior that starts is um, a 5'11 uh, Zoe Smith. Her name is she and Booth are two uh, are both thousand-point scorers, I should say. Okay. So in 6'1 and 5'11, you have some size, some proven sure. scoring ability there. If if you're this far, um, you you have something to bring to the mm -hmm. table, and and but I, your point is well taken. Having having the the um, the experience of, of of playing in Hershey, uh, some people some people go there, and because it's a big arena, the 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 depth perception of the seats well behind the basket some, can mm. sometimes throw off jump shots for a quarter or a half, sometimes longer, sometimes. Teams never dial it in. It, it is a, it is unique in, in that situation because it's such a vast hockey you know arena, the the, the Giant Center. Um, so that's something that has to be overcome. That's something that the Lords girls know going in that they have to you know in warm ups dial that in and and, and be aware of that. So yeah, I, I I think I think they can have if there is an advantage to be had. I think it's Lords experience having played there. Uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't touch on the Lords boys. Our third. Valley State semifinal team, which is just crazy to have three get that far. Um, they got off to a good start Monday night against 
Sankofa Freedom. Uh, they were up 21-8 or so after the first quarter, and then things went sideways quickly. They ended up losing by 17. Uh, Thomas Schultz scored 23 points in his his last basketball game for the Red Raiders. Uh, a great career for him. Um, now he can start thinking about his main sport, uh, baseball, where he's going to go play at Vanderbilt next year. And you can start thinking about baseball yeah. after fr- Friday or Saturday, too. It's, it's, it's remarkable to me that Thomas Schultz is, <laughs> is dealing with baseball sooner than I am. I mean, <laughs> usually, you know, we're, we're into it a, a, a good week by now. Um, and uh, and Lourdes, having played for the state championship last year, certainly he got a, a later start on his season. But, yeah, g- g- great for, for Lourdes and, and for, uh, you know, it, adding to what has really been an historic uh, f- uh, winter sports mm-hmm. season for us, especially on the, the on the basketball side. Sure. So, Scott, you're looking forward to Friday at noon. I'm yeah. making a trip Friday myself. I'm mm-hmm. headed to Charlotte. Uh, 4 o'clock, the Bucknell women, seated 12th, take on 5th seated Florida State in the NCAA tournament. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to headed down there early Friday morning. Um, it's going to be a long drive, but it's going to be worth it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> hats off to the to the Bucknell women. Uh, maybe they they were a bit of a favorite, and and this is you know kind of f- fulfilling fulfilling that end of it. But I've just been you know at every stage of of this team's progression and and years leading up to it, mm-hmm. impressed with Coach Aaron Russell. Uh, win lose a uh, lot of winning, a lot uh, of winning. <laughs> but uh, just just uh, the the things he's done with this program in a short period of time. Uh, I I I. I <laughs> I can't wait to see what he applies on Saturday in a game against Florida State. You know what he what he cooks up and and what his girls execute to, to give themselves a chance to win. I, I think uh, with the momentum they have and, and a person like that behind the wheel, I, I'm I'm just really excited to see the, the kind of effort they put forth. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to, to it's going to be a, a big test. Obviously, um, 12th seed is the best seed in Bucknell history. It's the best seed for a Patriot League team since the tournament expanded to 64 teams. So they're in a much better position than they were two years ago when they were a 14 seed and, and took on what everyone in the know said was a vastly underseeded Maryland team. Sure. And they're feeling a lot more confident, partially because of that experience, partially because of the the better seed. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, they, they're playing really well. Um, yeah, I think they have a shot. I mean, why not? They can shoot well from outside florida state struggles to shoot sometimes but uh they're big so uh coach herself said rebounding was going to be one of the big keys especially limiting florida state's offensive rebounds Mm -hmm. um they have a 2-2-1 press that can cause some trouble so i talked to you know some guards this week before they they headed off to charlotte today um you know feel good about about their chances getting the ball up um, Coach Russell said the one thing is if they're going to pull the upset, they have to shoot well. And the good thing about that is there's been a lot of games this season that they've shot very well. Uh, there was a, I did a story in Wednesday's paper about Abby Cap, kind of the un, unsung hero. She's shooting 43% from three-pointers this year. Huh. Um, she's They have a, a, probably five or six girls that are at 37% or higher. So, you know, and we, talk, we think as general sports fans – the men's tournament is what you look at. And when you're looking for upsets, you see who has an experienced team that can shoot three-pointers. And the Bucknell women have that. So I'm not going to go as far as to say pick them, but at least give it a good consideration. Whew. I think that's all I got. That's our... Anything you want to add, Mr. Dudinsky? No, it's been, it's been a, a you know I, I don't mean to by by talking so much basketball I don't mean to to not recognize the great wrestling oh, and swimming sure. we've had uh, this this winter season. Um, it's been it's you know not only historic in some senses but but a lot of fun. Right. Uh, I, I mean th- th- we really we've really enjoyed. Uh, Covering the uh, you know the high school athletes, the college athletes, um, and and you know it's it's always it's always special to be along for rides like this, a state championship, an NCAA tournament. All right, thanks for watching us all all winter. Um, we'll be back with some aspect of this in the spring, whether that's audio only, whether that's playoff previews. But uh, just stay tuned to dailyatom.com. Pick up the daily item each morning, or or just have it brought to your house and. Uh, We'll keep you abreast of all that's going on in the Valley. Thanks for watching.